the Gottlieb RoboWar MPU and from the picture that I rolled in, you can see that it boots with a message that says tilt switch closed. And it's important to distinguish between tilt switch and slam switch. Slam switch, I defeat on all Gottlieb System 80 MPUs except the last five by adding this wire loop between, sorry, between these two components. Now there's another way you can put a glob of solder between those two traces. I just think this is cleaner and it gives me a place to put my hang tag. So clearly this MPU has a switch matrix problem. So I want to take the opportunity to show everybody how to do a diode check on 7400 series chips. These five chips are the switch matrix components for every system 80 MPU. And U4, the 6532, is the riot that processes the switch matrix. So we can diode test these chips by setting our meter to diode check. Red probe on the lower left pin, which is pin seven on 7400XX series chips. By the way, this works on 14 pin chips, 16 pin chips, 18, 20, everything that's 74XX. And like any test, this test can identify a failed component, but it cannot identify a properly working component, or it can't prove that it's properly working because we're not running the components under load. So that's a normal, um, I call personality, uh, diode drop on a system 80 MPU about 0.3. So I just rake down through across these pins and anything that's between 0.4 and 0.7 is probably okay. Probably because again, we can't prove that a chip is working. We can only disprove that a chip is working. All right, so that chip is just fine. So I'm gonna go up and test Z14 now. And that's a problem that 1.7 is, and these other pins are all out of spec also. So this chip is most likely bad. So I'm going to take it out and I'll test it on my chip tester. Let's uh, move over to the other 7400 and show you what a properly working chip looks like. It's easy. You can keep your red lead on any of the lower left corner pins on any of the chips on the board because they're all connected. I can show you that they're connected here. See, it's a short between those two pins. So we know this chip's bad so far. Let's check this one out. Well, that one's gonna be bad too. So that's not too surprising. So whatever switch is at the uh, intersection of the row and column chip, is shorted. There's a problem with that switch. It got shorted to high voltage, something like that. So this one's bad. This one's bad. Let's test this one. This is not that uncommon on system 80 MPUs. It's next to alkaline corrosion, it's probably the thing that kills most system 80 MPUs. Oops, slid off the chip. So that chip's good. So I'm going to replace these two chips and we'll be right back. I have cleanly removed the 7400 and 7404s, installed a socket, I always install a socket, and then replace the parts with some NOS parts from my parts supply. So while I'm here, and an MPU and a driver board from a uh, Silver Slugger is under test back there, I also replaced the incoming filter, 5 volt filter cap, I installed the Dallas Maxim 1811 <laughs> equivalent reset generator. I uh, added these jumpers. Those are all necessary for the reset ge generator, and that's outlined in the pin wiki also. This is a one farad five volt super cap, and I leave this 62 ohm resistor in place because it limits the amount of discharge of the super cap. I installed the socket in the 5101 position so that the client can install an NV RAM if he'd like to. I don't put 
NVRAM into System 80 boards any longer because it's just so expensive. 5101 NVRAM is these days. And I installed, I removed cleanly the old OEM daughter board, looks like this, and installed an aftermarket board. And the reason I do that is that most System 80 daughter boards that I take off have fractured solder joints, and you can't get to them without taking the daughter board off. Now, I could have reflowed those and put the old daughter board back on, but this board here is a uh, much better solution than this crazy cantilevered thing that Gottlieb developed. Now, the two chips that I took out, this is the 7404, and this is my chip tester. Let me uh, shade it a little bit so you can see the the error code, ERR, that one is definitely bad. This is the Chinese chip tester always identifies bad 7400 and 7404 chips. So those two chips were definitely bad. Into the trash bin they go and over to the game to test. Well, I have just completed a game of Robo Wars and testing this MPU. And good news, it appears to be operating perfectly. I've set the dip switches to mimic my RoboWar. So let's get it into test. And I have my switch matrix tester connected. This is one I made before Pinitech made theirs widely available. So I can test the lamps on ADB games. It's not really not that useful. I'll go back to attract mode and we can see all of them working. And we can test the solenoids. So you could either see or hear a solenoid firing. Now the switch matrix. I'll go diagonally across and test the rows and the columns simultaneously. And I'm not going to do 77 because 77 does something different most of the time. But that showed row 7 and column 7. Dip switch is set to 030303 Charlie 2. Correct. And display test. Looks good. And the memory test and the ROM checksums. Now that 291 Charlie, that is the prom checksum for the free play version of RoboWar, which I have installed. So this board is good to go. I would suggest to the client that he add a ground modification from the MPU to one of these screws where the yellow straps are attached that'll be just fine and this board set is good to go so let me show you attract mode you can see that all the lamps are operating correctly one day i gotta get that target decal off the top of that first lamp insert thanks for sending it